Hey guys, weekend energy update. Let's get into it. And we do have some big things setting up as we are closing out this month of March, preparing to enter the month of April 2024, which is hosting some really big, significant celestial events, which you guys all know we talk about all the time, this big Uranus-Jupiter conjunction happening in the sign of Taurus, and also a very powerful total solar eclipse that's going to be happening on April 8th. Um, both of those activations that are, you know, pending over this next couple of weeks are probably going to start activating on some level throughout the course of the weekend. We have a moon that is going to activate both Uranus and Jupiter this weekend. And uh, the sun is beginning to move into alignment with the North Node with Chiron, which is going to be representing this eclipse that we have coming up on the 8th of April as well. So, you know, Mm. We just got, we've got a very active energetic weekend actually, lots happening, the moon activating a lot of planets. Let's get into it guys, let's break things down and look at the greater context of all we have going on this weekend, what aspects and transits uh, do we have coming together and what perhaps are things going to be like for us as we close out the month of March. Welcome back to my channel, you guys. Today is Friday, March 29th, 2024. My name is Aubrey. This is your astrological outlook of the weekend where we are narrating the shift of the ages in this video. Of course, we are talking about the energy, the astrology, all that we have playing out on an energetic level as we move through the weekend, which also happens to be closing out the month of March, uh, bridging us into the month of April, which is going to be a very wild ride. This month has been spoken about in the astrological community for quite a while very very climactic period of time probably in the over the course you know of this entire year we'll probably be able to pinpoint the stuff that happens around the month of april as playing some type of significant role but we're looking at a jupiter uranus conjunction that's going to be happening on april 16th this is a big deal we'll talk a lot more about it and also this full solar eclipse that is going to be happening on April 8th, just, you know, like a, a week earlier. So, you know, we're moving towards some, and you know, both of these things are representing profound change, life-changing events, occurrences, um, moments, okay, life-changing moments in time that perhaps we have not been expecting, but nonetheless are going to significantly impact the trajectory of the future and things unfolding going forward. Um, and, you know, <laughs> it's going to be, as I said, you know, it's probably going to be a pretty wild ride. And uh, to start the month of April, we have Mercury actually stationing retrograde in the sky. So as we move through these, you know, big, <laughs> significant and rare astrological events that are celestial events that are going to be taking place in April, we're also going to be in Mercury retrograde energy. So we need to keep that in mind as well. And, you know, this weekend really is the last opportunity that we have outside of the Mercury retrograde energy for a while. You know, if you need to make a choice, if you need to make a decision, or, you know, if you need to, you know, sign a contract or something like that, you may want to or make a big purchase or something, investment, maybe you want to go ahead and do that before for Mercury stations retrograde. However, I will say we are in an eclipse window right now. And, you know, we are in the energy coming out of a lunar eclipse in, in Libra. And I don't necessarily recommend this is a good time to be really meddling in things or getting involved in things or making major choices or decisions and stuff like that anyways. <clears throat> but if, you know, you're already, you already have that ball rolling and you're in that type of situation, if you can kind of you know, do what needs to be done maybe before Mercury goes retrograde on the first, maybe that in some way could benefit you in your unfolding process. So let's, uh, I'll put that right there, but we, you know, are in this eclipse window, right? We had the full moon eclipse that happened on Monday on the 25th, defining a lot of the energy we've been moving through this week. I talked about it in my last video and this weekend, um, big things are really formally, I feel like beginning to establish themselves in the sky. Now, it's interesting because we do have this big Uranus-Jupiter conjunction that everybody's talking about, that I've been talking about for a while, that I'm going to be talking about much more over the coming weeks. This is going to be coming to fruition on April 16th. But this weekend, these planets are going to move within a three-degree 
orb of one another, which in astrology is, you know, a formal conjunction. So the conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus formally activates in a proximity where we definitely are counting it as like live uh, on Saturday actually and the moon is transiting Uranus and Jupiter on Friday and this is going to be setting off this activation as well so we are likely to really start uh, maybe feeling in this more tangible palpable way the impact of what is to come with the Jupiter Uranus conjunction as we move through the course of the weekend. Now one of the reasons that this conjunction is such a big deal is because this is a rare alignment. The uh, Jupiter and Uranus have not aligned together in the sign of Taurus since May of 1941 which also happened to be a very historically significant period of time and I do think that we're going to see perhaps a parallel level of historical significance playing out this year and in the times to come in the following you know next several years perhaps as well uh it's just a big deal that we have Uranus the galactic fixer the great awakener shocks surprises coming into alignment with Jupiter the planet that expands things supersizes energy that you know blows things up. This is just likely to be a highly erratic period of time. There are likely to be some big like upsets or changes or events that go on that totally shake foundations and sort of up level the paradigm that we've been accustomed to, um, you know, perhaps since the last <laughs> Uranus Jupiter conjunction occurred and the upsets that resulted from that following the early 1940s okay and Friday we have the moon transiting the sign of Scorpio as I said will be coming into an opposition with Jupiter and Uranus in their building nearly formally activated at three degree orb conjunction the exact activation is going to be taking place on April 16th so this is going to be building of course through this next couple of weeks and then also it will be waning out this in this whole year in its entirety is likely to be quite defined by whatever this particular transit is going to activate and bring but especially you know considering that it is happening in such close proximity to this full powerful solar eclipse like that's also very significant and not only that we also have another rather disturbing energy that's building in the sky and that will be coming into fruition right around the same time and that is Mars and Saturn are going to be coming into a conjunction in Pisces which is another energy that doesn't happen all the time we haven't had a Mars Saturn in Pisces conjunction since this March of 1994 and then it happened again in March of 1996 so we had two hits of this energy in the sign of Pisces back in the 90s and that's the last time that we have interacted with this particular alignment and this particular sign Mars and Saturn coming together does not tend to have the best reputation in terms of output so it will be interesting to see you know what sort of comes with this and we'll be talking about this a lot as well but um definitely adding I feel like a level of tension and hostility and combustion and combativeness to an already very like uh um like hair trigger reaction kind of energetic climax so um, I do think that things could honestly get quite fiery as we move throughout the course of this next couple of weeks um, things are likely to be perhaps a bit uncertain lacking stability and again we may begin to feel ourselves being pulled in a certain direction or you know again like agitating change like we need to do something to create some type of change or to um, break away from something somehow like this could definitely be some you know an impulse that we kind of feel like building within us or just generally kind of like permeating the energetic field um, don't be surprised as this Jupiter Uranus conjunction comes more into fruition over this next couple of weeks if you literally can feel like the static electricity in the air or something like that's just how energy is expressing right now because there's some big changes that need to take place and again 
this weekend is really, I feel like getting the ball rolling kind of in this direction. On Friday, of course, with the moon in Scorpio, as I've said, opposing Jupiter and Uranus and Taurus, this is going to activate this energy. It's also likely to bring some powerful creative impulses. We're talking about Jupiter and we're talking about Uranus. Another feature of both of these energies, Sagittarius and Aquarius, they both have elements of like truth, wisdom, higher perspective justice to some extent and awakening to a higher truth so you know on one hand while you know Jupiter and Uranus together are likely to be shaking foundations and crumbling towers and up leveling you know what's been solid and sturdy and steadfast and secure in the past if it is out of alignment with truth and integrity and authenticity there is likely to be this generalized awakening or understanding things from a higher level or like epiphanies or some type of more like mentalized experience where we're like figuring something out in a way that is actually helping us to move forward in a new direction and release some past patterning that maybe we have been enmeshed in or involved in or has defined us or our lives or our relationships throughout the majority of the previous chapters of our lives up until this point in time. Powerful insight in terms of what's been hidden could be coming through. While we have the moon in Scorpio on Friday opposing Jupiter and Uranus in the sign of Taurus, this is awakening to the truth of value, to the truth of purpose, to the truth of resources, of what could be. Venus, okay, who rules the sign of Taurus where Jupiter and Uranus are in opposition to the moon on Friday is also moving into a conjunction with Neptune in Pisces where the moon in Scorpio will be coming into a trine as well. This is making me think because Venus is ruling the position of our big conjunction Jupiter um Uranus that's pending and she's also coming into a conjunction with Neptune and the moon is activating both of these, activating the opposition by opposition, Jupiter and Uranus, activating by trine, Venus and Neptune. Something that's been hidden to hidden for us along the lines of love or money or value or partnerships or resources. The truth about something in ways that we've been invested or in terms of what we've been connecting in or in terms of how we've been relating to things. This could also have to do with ideals or fantasies or illusions perhaps that we've been buying into like in some regard, there is likely to just be something that is coming clear to us. This could have a lot to do with like, you know, friendships and stuff like that also, because remember, we are in this specific eclipse window right now following a south node Libra eclipse, which is also about helping us to detach and to let go of and to move on from, uh, essentially connections that are no longer a reflection of who we are and who we were becoming past identities past images past values and value systems this could also be old mindsets and stuff like that there's definitely a need to like upgrade our social circle or upgrade our value system or even like upgrade like our personal image or like sense of style or the way that we're presenting ourselves in the context of who we're becoming now the personal changes that we're making and you know we've got to release let go of our old identities our old connections our old resources our old values like um you know old relationships partnerships commitments, maybe something along those lines in order to go through this personal process of upgrade. That it, it, that really is what it is. It's redefining ourselves in the context of who we're truly meant to be instead of perhaps who we were taught we were supposed to be or who we thought we were supposed to be based on, you know, various forms of societal conditioning or group think somehow. Um, this is very much about helping us to pursue our own individuality rather than adhere to like the group mind. When we're talking about North Node in the sign of Aries, South Node in the sign of Libra, uh, Eclipse Window. But remember, South Node in the sign of Libra, Eclipse Window, this could also have us feeling we're sort of like losing our mind about some things, you know, questioning our judgment, questioning like whether we are, you know, being fair or balanced in some type of a way, maybe unsure about like even, you know, what is right and what is not, what we want and what we don't want as we are going through this process of, you know, weeding out what no longer 
suits our garden okay so that we can plant more of what does moving forward and you know, you guys know that this is just a major time of personal rebirth and transformation as we move towards, as I said, this North Node in Aries, like our own personal leadership era, redefining the self in alignment with the higher purpose that we are ultimately realizing as a result of whatever it is that we are going through at this period of time. Powerful revelations are likely to come in this energy, as I said, awakening to something probably about other people. We have so much symbolism on Friday that is indicating this very same theme. We have the sun at 10 degrees of Aries. That Sabian symbol is a teacher, gives new symbolic form to traditional images, seeing things in a different way. We have Mercury at 27 Aries through imagination. A lost opportunity is regained, seeing things a different way. We have Venus at 22 Pisces, a prophet bringing down the new new law from Sinai, doing things a different way, right? Um, and we have Uranus at 21 degrees of Taurus right now. That Sabian symbol is a moving finger points to significant passages in a book, perhaps because of something that we are learning, information we're coming in contact with, something that we are awakening to, some epiphany that may be striking us out of nowhere with the planet Uranus holding us down at this specific degree. Now, another interesting degree that we have going on right now in the context of you know these revelations or what we could be finding out or you know all this Venetian energy bringing something clear to us at this point as well we do have Saturn at 14 Pisces that Sabian symbol is a woman wrapped in fox fur which that specific symbolism can give connotations of, you know, deception and trickery, trickery. And of course, we're talking about the feminine energy. This would correlate to Venus moving into a conjunction with Neptune, which would be emblematic of some type of, you know, trickery or deception or dishonesty. Okay, according to the lower octaves, Pisces energy, Neptune energy has some really, really beautiful octaves too, you know, especially Neptune and Venus in the sign of Pisces. This can really, this is like the heights of high heart energy, like compassion, empathy, like wanting to be charitable and wanting to give, like just out of the kindness of our heart, like highly, highly creative, divinely inspired, art, music, beauty, like living like the the most idealistic beauty you know conceptually possible would be represented by Venus and Neptune coming together in Pisces um Neptune is the higher octave Venetian energy as well so I don't mean to just like you know rag on Venus and Neptune and Pisces and you know the deceptive side of this energy so there are very very beautiful positive indications of this energy as well I don't mean you know somebody that just happens to have Venus and Neptune or yeah and a conjunction in their chart is just going to be you know always like deceptive and stuff like that however when you know all energy works in polarities and we're talking about the Piscean energy which is the two fish swimming in opposite directions this is a very polarized sign so the um dichotomy between the octaves I feel like in the Piscean energy can be quite profound like the the contrast between the high octave Piscean energy and the low octave Piscean energy I feel like can uh, be very, very polarized, okay? And so for all of the beauty and the um, divinely inspired, you know, wonder and creative energy that can come through in the midst of a Venus-Neptune conjunction in the sign of Pisces, it is also likely to be bringing up um, themes of deception or hiding things when it comes to relationships to finances to money love and the reason why I'm kind of like narrowing in on this end this octave of the spectrum for my analysis of this current uh, building Venus Neptune conjunction is on one hand it's being trined by the moon in Scorpio what does the moon in Scorpio do the moon in Scorpio goes deep right the moon in Scorpio is like penetrating uh, insight powerful powerful intuition like the moon in Scorpio it 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 knows you're lying if you're lying before you even open your mouth you know what I mean like it just is 
a very psychic force. And when it's trining Neptune and Venus coming together in Pisces, this is being able to see through facades, to see through illusions cast by beauty, you know, to crack the rose colored glasses, to, um, to, to be able to see the truth through some type of, you know, beautiful picture or beautiful illusion or through some type of charm. You know what I mean? Like we just have an ability to see the deeper truth of things. And when we caught, when we're, when we're simultaneously talking about the opposition between Jupiter and Neptune, that is also the wake up call and Venus and Neptune in Pisces, like this is the dream and the slumber. So when the moon in Scorpio, which is this penetratingly like psychic energy is it, reflecting on okay what we're awakening to the truths that we're realizing in Venus's sign when she is in the conjunction with Neptune and Pisces being trined by the moon this is like you know if you've got nothing to hide then you're fine but if you've been hiding things especially in the context of money or love or partnerships agreements like anything like that like this is energy where a lot of that is likely to be detected somehow or people might just be spontaneously figuring things out so there's that and again like the symbolism is all right behind that as well coming through on Friday so I do feel like Friday could be a weird day you know as I just mentioned you might be catching wind of some things perhaps uh, there could just be unusual things playing out or going on or we could start feeling this kind of just like zapped or you know overwhelmed or like hyper stimulated over stimulated by things that are going on that's probably going to be you know a strong collective tendency over the course of this next month or so as we move more into this activated Jupiter Uranus energy, this is really going to make it difficult to stay grounded, difficult to sleep. A lot of people are going to be on edge. This is like people being like cracked out, you know what I mean? Because of so much like stimulation and, um, you know, we're going to want to do our best to actively like do things to help promote like our parasympathetic nervous system. You know what I mean? Like, um, doing like consciously choosing to do stuff to ground ourselves to relax ourselves to promote our ability to get like a more restful night's sleep and you know trying not to allow ourselves to spin out of control or to get all whipped up or to get like um excessively anxious about things you know the more that we can have faith the more that we can trust the unfolding process right now the more that we can like kind of like kick back and decide that we're gonna kind of like view the unfolding event right now as kind of like a spectator in a, a show you know it's probably going to be better for our mental health if we allow ourselves to get attached and whipped up to all of the likely pending dramas that are you know probably going to be spinning themselves up in a just more I don't know prominent than normal way over this next several weeks it could <laughs> have a lot of people I feel like honestly just like losing their minds another thing about this eclipse and we'll talk more about it like I'm not saying losing their minds for no reason like those are very specific words that I'm choosing and that's because the Jupiter Uranus conjunction also happens to be happening within proximity of a fixed star called Al Gol in the sky which has the connotations as uh, in the in terms of the mythology of that fixed star as well with sort of losing one's head or losing one's mind and um as we go through all of these big you know changes that don't come along all that often uh especially people who are you know generally unaware of the things playing out on a greater energetic level maybe just having a hard time coping so the more mentally prepared okay that we can be in the context of what is unfolding and the more that we can also understand that like this is uranian energy you guys you don't know what's going on okay until you get down the road and like the dust clears all right there it's likely to you're likely to have several false interpretations 
of maybe like what is happening before you come to understand like what is actually happening in terms of you know perhaps some like sudden or chaotic or crazy events that seem to be coming up over this next couple of weeks the ability to stay focused is also probably going to be something that is eluding us to some extent as we you know move through this energy very easily distracted by things coming up we may feel a bit like a chicken with our head cut off type of vibes you know and again like this kind Coming in this weekend as well especially on Friday when the moon does oppose Uranus but again the higher octaves of the Venus Neptune conjunction in trying to our Scorpio moon you know deep like creative impulses coming to the surface divinely inspired art music design you know building beauty anything along those lines uh very very creatively supported in the energy on friday as well um i want to list you guys aside from the jupiter uranus conjunction that we are building that everybody knows about that you know all the astrologers are talking about right now which is being activated by the moon on friday as we know um, we also have some other alignments that are coming into fruition in the sky right now as well. And I want to mention those just so that you guys know really like everything that's going on right now in the context of this month that we're moving into and both the solar eclipse and the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. So the first one that I mentioned, it, I had already mentioned this, it's Mars coming into an alignment with Saturn in the sign of Pisces. This is you know, probably going to be a bit rough. And honestly, like, oh, I find it to be ever so like synchronistic that we would have a Mars Saturn conjunction exactly when we're having a Jupiter Uranus uh, conjunction as well. It's definitely I feel like bringing up the um, combative nature, uh, the explosive nature, perhaps of what might come with Jupiter and Uranus in a conjunction. So we've got that we're going to be talking about that. We also you know, as I've just been talking about have Venus building into a conjunction with Neptune, you know, beautiful energy, the best of the best, like great, fantastic daydreamer energy, creative energy. However, not the most truthful, not the most straightforward and can definitely at this point in time specifically be bringing up deception or things that have just generally been hidden or obscured or unclear somehow in the context of relationships, partnerships, things to do with money, resources, you know, everything along the lines of Libra and Taurus, both the signs ruled by Venus. We also have the sun and Aries now moving into alignment with the North Node and with Chiron. And of course, this is the activation that will bring us that full solar eclipse that we have coming up over this next couple of weeks. Um, that's a big deal. And it's part of three eclipses. One was in 2017. And then we have this one in 2024. And then we actually have the third in 2044. So 2017, 2024 and 2020 or 2044 are all energetically linked through solar eclipses that have been you know that of course the first one was in 2017 so 2017 to 2044 are energetically linked somehow and I feel like that what we're moving towards now that is uh represented with this center eclipse on April 8th it's probably going to be you know or bring forth what is going to be the like energetic activation where we understand, you know, what this series of three eclipses is doing to change our reality somehow, because we know, especially for, you know, us in North America, where this eclipse is traveling over, it's likely to make a very big impact somehow. Um, so, you know, we've got that. And that is also the moon this and as we get through this report through Saturday and Sunday, Monday, I will talk more about you know how this energy is implicated this weekend but we have the moon about to leave Scorpio and transit Sag on Saturday and Sunday which will trine the sun the north node and Chiron in the sign of Aries perhaps a foreshadowing you know what might be to come or 
beginning again to get the ball rolling in terms of what might be to come with this solar eclipse that's coming up as well. And then, as I said, to begin this report on April 1st, we're going to have Mercury stationing retrograde as well. So aside from the uh, Uranus-Jupiter conjunction, we are also looking at a building Mars-Saturn conjunction, Venus-Neptune conjunction, the Sun moving into conjunction with North Node Chiron, which will be our eclipse, and then Mercury stationing as well. So very, very, very active energetic time. And the moon, right, which is a trigger for energetics. The moon is our internal environment. It's our feelings. It's what's going on inside. When the moon is making aspect to planets, this is when things have a tendency of happening. And the moon is aspecting by opposition and trying, you know, a couple of these alignments on Friday, and then we'll move into Sagittarius and start activating, as I said, the Aries planets by trying Sun, North Node, Chiron, and also so remember, Sagittarius is ruled by what planet? Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. So the moon's, simply the moon's presence in the sign of Sagittarius is also then therefore activating Jupiter in the conjunction to Uranus in the sign of Taurus. So the moon is... Uh, as I have been, you know, talking about throughout the course of this report, really setting off a lot of this pending April energy. And we may be begin to start picking up on or, you know, things may start happening, okay, is what I'm trying to say, in the context of, you know, what these specific other activations are going to bring as we move through the weekend. Um, and all of these things, right, the, the Mars... Uh, Saturn conjunction, Venus, Neptune conjunction, Mercury retrograde, it's all happening. And, and even the eclipse, it's all happening against the backdrop of the Uranus Jupiter, because that really is that's sort of like the energetic backdrop all year is this year of these massive sweeping changes to anything essentially that has been out of alignment with authentic truth and potential, especially in the context of like resources and assets and reestablishing kind of like an authentic value somehow. Okay, so lots, lots going on. As I said, 1941, the year is coming up right now. 1994 and 1996 are coming up right now. 2017 is coming up right now. There's lots of like past connections, things that have happened in the past that might be just playing into or relevant in the context of what's going on right now somehow. So you may be feeling it, you may be picking up on this vibe, the need to break away from something somehow, break free from something somehow, initiate or create some type of big change somehow, maybe uh, speak your mind or stand up for yourself somehow, sever ties or just, you know, be a generator of some big or significant change. You could be sensing also that something's about to happen or that something's got to give even um, an energy this week is going to be picking up momentum in that regard. Moving into Saturday, Jupiter does, this is the day where Jupiter moves forward a degree, closes the gap between Uranus and Jupiter to within the three degree orb, which, you know, this is a hot transit. It's active. It's live. Okay. The conjunction as of Saturday, the moon on Saturday is also having, it, it will have moved into Sagittarius and it's going to be squaring Mars and Saturn as they come, as they're building into their conjunction in Pisces, this is likely to be a day where people are kind of touchy, um, avoidant, or maybe excessive. The moon in Sagittarius, as I said, this is inherently going to be activating Jupiter in the conjunction to Uranus. So this also is energy that is perhaps setting off some of these like hair trigger responses to things that could be going on out there. The moon in Sag, this is a fiery energy squaring Mars in Pisces, Saturn in Pisces, um, seriously avoiding the truth of reality could be a road that people are trying to go down. Or this could also just be some pretty serious like fights or conflicts coming up over beliefs, over belief systems, over, you know, fact and fiction, truth versus an illusion, what I believe versus what you believe. Uh, this could be a thing as well. Remember, we have Mars in the sign of Pisces right now. When Mars is in Pisces, there can be for better or worse, you know, it's not necessarily always a bad thing, but there can be an over identification with the belief systems. And, you know, if people are at odds, 
odds with our particular belief system, things can get a little bit heated, things can get a little bit fiery. So people, and that's, you know, we're talking about the moon in Sagittarius. This is belief also. This is the truth. This is, you know, my thoughts and my belief and my knowledge up against Pisces, like your belief system. So, and you know, the moon and Mars, there could, this could also bring conflict in terms of, again, like feminine energy, you know, with the mother or something somehow. Um, but it, it, it's probably just a more touchy day in the energy on Saturday. I don't think that we should go around like poking bears or provoking people because especially with like the hair trigger response energy, people could just be exploding. Um, it's sort of also like the last straw type of energy. Also, people just not having it anymore. So you don't really want to be on the receiving end of that. And you definitely don't want to be, you know, provoking people because a lot of people are just going to be ready to go. Okay, so... That's my perspective on that. Um, fights and conflicts over beliefs, what is true and what's not. Okay, I do think between now and essentially like the entire month of April, we are in just this very volatile, combustive, explosive energy, of course, and um, events and financial situations could be very reflective of that. And the moon, you know, like I said, this whole weekend is kind of like priming us foreshadowing perhaps the energy that we're moving into and what is to come with the moon moving through Sag all weekend Saturday and Sunday you know activating the Jupiter Uranus this is going to be probably bringing us maybe face to face with some of the changes that that energy is trying to bring to our lives as well I will say you guys out there people with strong natal Venetian energy if you got a lot of Libra energy if you got a lot of Taurus energy you guys may be kind of like feeling the most out of it throughout the course of the weekend maybe a little disoriented maybe just kind of like low vibe energy coming through as I said, you know, tapping into the higher octaves of the Venus Neptune energy could be quite helpful, quite therapeutic on a soul level if you do feel like you're just kind of like at the end of it and you do have a lot of Venus energy because the Venetian signs, man, we are dealing right now in South Node in the sign of Libra, okay, and the eclipse having just happened there and then this big conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus in the sign of Taurus, like it is a lot the venus archetype the venetian themes venetian energy generally and all that it represents and its affiliation and association with the feminine and with women and stuff too like this really is sort of like the energetic epicenter in terms of how all of these changes are happening what we need to let go of like it has a lot to do with the way that the vene the Venetian energy has been oriented within us in the past and you know that being what has perhaps detached us from our own like true authentic identity and purpose which is what is being uncovered to us ultimately right now the way energy is coming together through all of these big changes like that's ultimately what this is about it's about like creating such a schism like in our world or you know up leveling the ground under our feet to such an extent that like we can't hide from ourselves anymore and like we can't pretend to be someone else anymore because we're moving into the age of Aquarius we've got a 20 year Pluto Aquarius transit going on right now like I talk about all the time you guys like anything that is out of alignment with authentic potential and authentic value like it can't go forward into this energy this is about getting back on the track to like growing into like what we were originally meant to become before we got all messed up and scrambled by you know karmic loops okay and generational trauma and you know societal and cultural conditioning and group think and you know collective narratives and stuff like that and you know maybe getting so disoriented based on the common consensus that we didn't realize you know what we really were or who we were supposed to be or you know what our our purpose or our mission here was this whole period of time is about helping us to figure that out and to change our lives <laughs> whether it's a you know a conscious and intentional change or whether it's just something that hits us out of nowhere and plucks us out of whatever we've been doing and puts us on a whole nother course like that is the purpose behind it and ultimately I'm telling you guys as we move forward in time we're not going to 
want to go back to how things were before, you know, everything that is about to happen takes place, but it's probably not going to be a comfortable experience to go through. There's probably going to be a lot of uncertainty, a lot of insecurity, a lot of, you know, questioning ourselves, questioning our faith, but ultimately it will come back to our faith. Ultimately, if we can wear our faith as our armor through this process and hold to it, we're going to find that we could always trust the process and we could always trust a higher power and we could always trust our ourselves as well. And we're going to come out of this process with a profoundly restored sense of faith and a much stronger adherence to the spiritual connection that we cultivate and develop as we move through this period of time. It's actually going to have the impact of strengthening our faith tremendously, strengthening our character tremendously, and strengthening us as individuals tremendously. And as a result of that, you know, strengthening our own interpretation of our own value, our own relationship to ourselves and others. Like the, the ultimate outcome of what we go through now will make us into better, more aligned, more balanced people. But the process of getting there is just likely to get a bit messy. And we are moving into this, you know, it's a storm, you guys, and we're, we're moving in that direction now, but it's going to be okay. Um, but just know, you know, if you are holding a lot of that strong Venetian energy, you are, you know, really in like the line of fire, I guess we could say, with everything that's going on right now. So if you're feeling it, that's probably why. Um, knowing, as I was saying earlier, you know, knowing where we're going energetically right now, knowing why this is all happening, you know, the greater unfolding cosmic blueprint, our transition to the age of Aquarius. I do think that just simply the awareness can help to alleviate some of the anxiety and the uncertainty that could come along with these times. Remember, this is energy that is likely to have us feeling like sort of keyed up, you know, like, um, <laughs> It's it's Uranus, so it's hard to stay grounded, especially when it's happening in an earth sign like Taurus. So if you're just feeling all over the place, you know, starting this weekend and moving through this next couple of weeks, don't freak out. Just take some extra me measures to maybe get some extra rest. Don't overbook your schedule. Prepare or expect, rather, expect the unexpected. And, you know, maybe just leave yourself some extra space for things to change and shift, all right? understand perhaps the more combative nature of things on Saturday and also you know moving forward over this next couple of weeks as Mars and Saturn also build into their conjunction on Sunday we do have energy coming through on Sunday as the moon transits the mid degrees of Sag okay this is the day that is activating the pending solar eclipse energy that is coming up the moon and Sag will activate by trying the sun, the north node, and Chiron. And this is like a blast of healing energy, okay? Something positive, healing, inspiring, perhaps about the day on Sunday. And we could feel quite motivated or optimistic about the future somehow, kind of like puffing us up a little bit, maybe restoring some hope or some confidence somehow. I mean, a Sag moon on its own is definitely like a more upbeat vibe, kind of restoring some hope and some confidence in ourselves, bringing us back to life a little bit. Um, um, you know, making us feel like we can do it, we can move ahead. And then of course, trining, facilitate, uh, trine, trines in astrology are facilitating and assisting aspects. So there is something about, you know, the moon's transit through Sag, which may just have us feeling because we're talking about the moon, right? And this is our feelings, feeling better about things, feeling better about the future. Like maybe, you know, we are ready to let go of some things we've had to let go we've had to move on some things from the past but now like our future focus is coming in and we're feeling like okay I can do it I can move forward and like I'm ready to try something new like I'm ready to go in this new direction and again there could definitely be like a level or an element of healing that is coming through somehow but again whatever is triggering perhaps our healing experience that could be going on it's likely to be as a result of something that we're learning something that we're finding out some secret that's being uncovered something that's being revealed to us some like greater perspective or higher level of understanding or wisdom through experience that we are aligning ourselves with now somehow perhaps that we are awakening to perhaps an instant download perhaps some type of an epiphany that's hitting us out of nowhere with all of the like revelation type of energy as well could 
have to do with relationships, could have to do with financial connections or commitments or resources or values or all of the Taurus Libra themes somehow. But with the North Node there, with Chiron there, with the Moon there, like it's something that we're learning or figuring out that is helping us to heal, release, let go, and prepare to move forward in a new direction could be coming through on Sundays. While well, Sunday's energy is supporting new things to fall into place and old wounds to be healed through gaining wisdom and perspective. Um, triggering awakenings also that trigger change. So that's what I feel like we're looking at you guys as we move through the weekend. Um, you know, about to step forth into this crazy energy that is coming up over this next couple of weeks. And again, uh, April 1st, Mercury retrograde. So you may be picking up on that now already. Like I said, we are in a south node Libra eclipse window. Libra is an air sign. This is this mentalized energy, you know, we could feel like, and then, you know, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction happening near all goal. Like people on one hand could definitely feel like they are losing it on some level, but it's actually coming back together somehow in a way that's going to make a lot of sense at the end of the day, even though now it might not seem that way at all. So I don't know, you guys, interesting times that we're moving through. Let's get a synchronicity card. Let's get some guidance, shall we? What would be some really good advice for us to keep in mind throughout the course of this weekend as we prepare to enter April? Remember Mercury, you know, retrograde, Things are probably not going to be as they appear over this next couple of weeks. We got Mercury retrograde. We got a lot of Pisces energy going on. The Mars Saturn in the sign of Pisces. We got the eclipse coming up. Eclipses sort of block things out as well. And then, you know, moving towards this big conjunction in Mercury retrograde energy. Uranus is also like blessings in disguise, silver linings. Things are just probably not going to be as they initially appear moving over this next couple weeks. And that is so crazy because I literally just, you guys saw me shovel. I literally just said this and this is our, this is our guidance, a blessing in disguise. So that happened in like absolutely perfect synchronistic nature. That's why these are called the synchronicity cards. We got all of these cards and the one that popped out is a blessing in disguise, which is literally verbatim what I just got done saying about the way that Uranus energy functions with Mercury retrograde. We're not seeing things for what they really are with all the Pisces energy. There's a aspect of things that are likely to be shrouded or hidden or deceptive somehow also. Um, so as we move forward, you guys, as I said, a blessing in disguise. And the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. 1 Samuel 12, 18. Thunder and lightning can be frightening and give us a scare, but it is followed by a blessed rain. You are divinely guided and blessings follow. And you know, that's, this is the reality that I'm choosing to exist in over this next couple of weeks. You know, we can program our mind to see things however we want to as we move forward in this period of time, as we move forward into the more powerful Aquarian energy, as Pluto really takes, you know, hold of his transit through the sign of Aquarius, anchoring us into the new Aquarian age energy, our mindset and our perspective are going to become a very, very defining feature of our experiences um, in this reality. So how we choose to see things, our mental frame, okay, how we choose to align our perspectives to what's happening in us and around us is more important now than ever. So a blessing in disguise. That's what I'm saying. I'm sticking to it. And I will be back next time, you guys. I hope that you liked the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Share it with your friends if you think that they would enjoy this type of astrology content as well. Narrating the shift of the ages. Uh, leave me comments, you guys. What you have to say, your feedback is very, very relevant to me. I am super grateful for your presence here. If you're having experiences that line up with what I'm talking about or reflect what I'm talking about in these videos, please let me know in my comment section below. I love you guys so much. Um, and if you want to know what's on these whiteboards, I have a Facebook group in my uh, description box below where I post those and Janice Shulman, the creator of the Synchronicity Cards, she also posts the Synchronicity Cards in that group as well if you want a closer look. So that's what I have to say today, you guys. Come back with me on Monday. 
Mercury retrograde on Monday and we've got uh, April. We've got to look at the month of April. So I will be here to talk about it. You should be here too. You don't want to miss it. I will see you next time. Everybody have a beautiful weekend and until then, bye guys.